I've been, <clears throat> holy shit, I've been struggling so much on what I want to do this podcast on today, and I literally just don't know, and yeah, <laughs> I like, well, I, I have questions on my Tumblr, like I have so many, but <laughs> I like don't want to keep answering questions like for all of my solo podcasts. I was gonna do a podcast. I tried to film one on like kind of like my experience with different people and shit like that, but um, I don't know what to do. And I have a new mic. Obviously, you can hear this one sounds way fucking better. Uh, this is the one I use for my interviews. I'm all over the place right now, but I left my like stationary mic in New York on purpose because I fucking hated it and my bag was so overweight that I was like I'm just gonna leave this mic here whatever and I left it there and I regret it because I need it right now but I'm just gonna use this for today and the sound quality is clearly a lot better but I'm going to get like a real good mic like this audio sound for the remainder of my podcasts so yeah do I find it sad when girls can't exist without being in a relationship um I don't find it sad. I find it honestly kind of like normal. I find it um, just very human. I I think it's um, I think it's just going off of their intuition, which is correct. Which is that life is to be lived in pairs. It really is. That is like the that is like what we're made for. We're very social creatures, and we love love, and we are very loving beings. So for girls to constantly feel like they need to be in a relationship, to me, that just seems like they're tuned into their nature, which is that they want to be with someone. I think it now like kind of has a bad – I think, of course, you should always be okay with being – able to be by yourself because you never know how life goes and you never know what life is going to throw at you and you want to be prepared and I think having a good solid relationship with yourself is will only ever help you in life and I I I encourage people to do it if they haven't done it I but I don't think it's sad really I don't know if sad's the right word I more think it's just a different experience than me do I miss being in a relationship um I think I miss being in love having that thing with someone that's what I miss I love that and I think everyone loves that I'm like it makes me happy even just thinking about it I don't know like if how many times I've been in love and what was real or not. Like, I don't know. And like, I'm not a fucking expert on this. I don't, I don't know. You talked about not being close with your parents. So what's your idea of your family and your, is your sister's relationship to your parents identical to yours? Cause she basically went through the same experiences growing up with them as you did. If not, why do you think that's the case? That's a good question. My sister's experience with uh, my parents she has like a much more mature reaction than me. She's also been able to keep, neither of us are close with our mom. Our, I, I, I kind of don't really talk about my mom that much, but my the reason I'm not close with my mom is um, she she's like a good person, I think, but she um, she's just not that maternal. So she doesn't, she never like really wanted to like get to know us that well. I don't think it like crossed her mind, to be honest. She was like a full-time working mom, full like boss bitch kind of girl. Like literally her parents were immigrants and uh, fully turned nothing into uh, like a really good career for herself um, just based on her ambition and her intelligence. She's like a total boss and... Um, I respect her for that. I really do. But at, in consequence of that, um, she didn't really spend too much time with us. And um, we didn't really grow. I didn't like attach to my mom is what I realized, like in psycho- in my therapy and stuff like that. Um, because we just spent, didn't spend that much time together. And like there's like a bunch of things that like weren't the best that she did and that kind of made us, you know uh, – not be close and kind of have this divide my sister's relationship to both of them is my sister is such a peacekeeper 
and she just wants peace. She hates change and she she doesn't like to disrupt the peace. Like she just wants everyone to be happy. My sister also didn't attach to our parents. I've asked her about it. They were both just very distant and very um independent both of them they're highly independent some of the most independent people I've ever met actually happen to be my parents they just completely do their own thing like my mom literally moved to London she lives in London alone and just lives in she doesn't know anyone in London she just lives there by herself and my dad lives in Thailand by himself like what the fuck like I don't like they aren't really attached to us and so they, therefore, me and my sister didn't really attach to them. I um, definitely had a harder time with that. I think I was more hurt by it. Not to say my sister was unaffected because she definitely was and it's impossible not to be. But we both handled it in our different ways. And my sister definitely handled it in a way where she like wanted it from them. And then I grew to the point where I was like, I don't want anything from you guys anymore kind of thing. We both have the same opinions on how they on how our experience was we both feel the same kind of levels of uh absence and um loneliness and um lack of guidance and lack of supervision that's we definitely both feel that and we've talked about that and we 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 both have the same kind of opinions on everything on what happened and who they are my my sister was in thailand with my dad for five months and basically isolated my dad lives in chiang mai thailand which could not be a further place on the world than me my sister was there and chiang mai is like basically like a, a lot of forest and it's where he lives is like an hour outside of the closest town so he lives like literally in the middle of nowhere and my sister was there for five months in this kind of isolating sense. And she was there. She was edit. She was doing a film. She she made a film and she was editing a film and she wanted my dad's help, and um, basically was just there to get his like creative opinions and his taste. And she just wanted him to go through it and get his advice. This was like I think a year ago. And this is kind of where my sister. Um, realize that he's not the same anymore and that he he's just gotten a lot worse with age about like seven years ago he's even like a different person than he is now he just is a lot more empty as a person and just a lot less of his redeeming qualities kind of show through he used he used to be very funny and very uh charismatic and he could get away with a lot with those two things and um those kind of brighter lights of him has kind of started to dwindle more and this kind of empty person just exists there when she was leaving this is what um I'm gonna get her permission before I post this but when she was leaving she started to notice that like she's been there for five months like she was about to leave like there should be an appropriate kind of reaction that a dad has when your daughter leaves which is sad right like you should be sad she noticed that like on kind of the last two days that he started to manufacture a um like behavior of being sad that wasn't real and my sister does not talk bad about my dad she I have never had that issue I am I've always been on side of saying exactly what it is and I never got that felt the need to protect someone that was bad like I never got that I just I just don't get it like anyways so for her to say this to me last year um was kind of like a big deal because it was like the first time my sister had really acknowledged the fact that like I my sis like that it was the first time that she had really acknowledged the fact that uh he has mental illness essentially and so as she was leaving he like gave her a hug goodbye and she said that it felt like just completely empty she was like it was so 
there was no genuine sadness there was no genuine feeling and the housekeeper that was there she said that she felt more she gave her a hug goodbye she felt more of feeling and genuine sadness that she was leaving from the housekeeper um and it's a shame I think my sister um in time is going to be able to stand up for herself a little bit more and I think that that's something she's working on and um she's just the sweetest person ever and just wants peace versus me I clearly don't give a shit to have peace in my family I'm just like not I was the problem problematic child that like didn't really care as you can kind of probably gauge from how I speak about how I've dealt with certain things and I think I'm the one that can kind of keep a better relationship with our stepmom than her I think I um, feel for her a little bit more than my sister does and my mom does I, I see her more as a victim of someone who is not a good person I don't think either of my parents should have had kids to be honest I think that they both my dad was the one that wanted kids not my mom interestingly enough and I'm happy that they did because I'm born but I don't think either of them were the type of people that should have had kids me and my sister are both very independent and we're both islands and are different in our own way my sister can not talk to anyone for like six months and so can I and yeah we just both don't need anybody to survive and we don't need anything and we don't need our mom or our dad neither of us and that's definitely what we both have in common and she definitely handled it the more mature way than me versus where I was just like I don't care like if any of you guys like me so peace out I was yeah I did not handle it in a mature way but I can I can't help it I can't help it like this is just who I am tips on how to get a guy to like you I can tell you all that I know which is that I just like I don't have like a trick to get guys to like me I'm not like trying to manipulate people I just like I don't flirt with like any guys I think anyone in LA could tell you that I just don't flirt with anybody I'm just like myself like take it or leave it and that is my way of getting guys is I just like am like who I am and you can take me or leave me and I the guys that like me for me and like 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 a girl that's just being herself are the guys that I like so that's my tip is just be yourself I think that there's so much oversaturation of girls like being over sexual and not that it's bad I kind of like look at girls like that and I'm like that's cool that you there's so many different types of people that you can be and so many different types of women that you can be and the girls that are like super sexy and kind of like sirens in that way like that kind of level of seduction there's so many ways to seduce and I see that a lot you know girls just being very sexual and kind of like flirting and like talking with their eyes or whatever and I, I see that and it's not how I choose to go through life and it's not how I choose to like get guys or get guys to like me and I think there's so much of that out there that I just like never felt the need to like do that that I'm just like okay well I'm just going to just be myself and just not try to be anything to be honest my way of seducing <laughs> the, the reason I say like seducing and like seduction is because there are different types of seduction and I guess that is technically what they're asking how to get guys how to seduce a guy my way of seduction is to just be my natural self and that is always how I've been with guys and to me it will bring kind of like the more secure guys with themselves I I think guys appreciate girls that aren't trying that hard and girls that are just being themselves and don't feel the need to be like super sexy and not to say that's bad like I literally I think that's kind of cool and kind of like like gives you an edge I just don't do that I and I do think guys do appreciate girls that just aren't 
trying that hard. That is like my tips on how to get guys is just like be yourself and be normal and just talk to them like they're your friend like a normal like I don't talk to guys any differently than I talk to girls I talk to everyone the exact same literally like whether you're my boyfriend or you're my a person that I'm meeting that day like I'm pretty much consistently the same with everybody so I think that's my biggest tip and that's what's helped me and I think people appreciate it. The, the people that I, I'm i interested in are the ones that appreciate people just being themselves because that's what I look for. I'm not looking for a guy that is like trying to like put on the moves with me, you know. I'm looking for the guy that's just like comes up and is like, hey, how are you? Like I'm this person. Like nice to meet you. And it's just like authentically them and just not trying too hard and not trying to impress me. And those are the guys that I end up like falling for and like interest me at all are the ones that are just them and are just like not trying to be anything they're just lame and they just like they just show their patheticness right off the bat that's what I like I like guys that just don't try that hard and so therefore I'm not going to try hard either and we'll see we'll see who matches up with who that's kind of how I that's kind of how I look at it and that's kind of how I my tips to getting guys again like I not everything is going to work for everyone but honest to god try it like try to just be normal I think that helps I think that people like that I think it gives them a sense of safety because you're not trying to be cool or like hot or sexy you're just like hey what's up how are you like crack a joke like I don't know like that's how I I just that's how I like get guys is I just like don't try <laughs> and see what happens and yeah I think that's the coolest way to do it is just be yourself and you're and the people you're gonna attract other people who are being themselves and those are the ones where you match up yeah I don't know <laughs> I always end up saying the wrong thing or nothing at all how do I keep a conversation going with friends whom I haven't talked to in a while while a complete strip in a while a complete stranger someone older than you what should I do when I feel stuck in a combo I've said this I'll I'm this is gonna be a short answer to this question because I've kind of touched upon this but I'm just gonna briefly re reiterate whenever I'm nervous like for like oh I'm about to like someone's like I'm about to go to dinner with someone that like for the first time or like a new friend or something all I rely on like even with my podcast when I'm doing interviews like I have to do a po I have to kind of perform like I I'm the host so I have to like if the conversation gets in a lull it's not on them it's on me so I always have to like be on my like conversation game always and so my biggest trick like I don't prepare questions for podcasts because I don't want to be in my head about it because the best way I think to have a flowing conversation is to listen that saves me out of everything obviously that goes easier said than done but like it helps if you're interested obviously I think I'm just actually interested in what people have to say if you're actually interested in people have to say listen try to tune in your focus I think I think it's your focus I think people struggle with focus and they start thinking about themselves or they start saying thinking about other things when really all the answers to a good conversation are within the other person if you just listen to them if you're just honing in on where you are you're kind of zoned in clocked in you can kind of go anywhere with the conversation if you're if you're interested and you're curious um I think that's kind of it I know I've said similar things like ask questions and listen whatnot you know what like the only thing I do prepare for podcasts is how to start it that's what I do I think about how I'm going to start the first like intro so I'll like think about it in my head I'm like okay I'm having this guest on like what's like a good way to kind of start the conversation because that's where I get tripped up of like how am I gonna fucking start this like I don't once I'm in it I'm in it and you can kind of like there's so much to talk about once someone starts talking and like there's like they can talk about this and like I don't I don't know I'm just interested in um people's what they have to say honestly so I'm trying to like think of other ways to carry on a conversation other than that but this is kind of just where I'm at it's 
Honing in your listening skills, I think is a huge tool to have in your tool belt as a person to carry a good conversation and to hold a good conversation is listening. Listening and a general curiosity. That's all it takes. Truly, like that's it. It's not some special secret thing. It's just listening and being interested in what you're talking about and not and focus. But the thing is, if it comes from desire, it doesn't feel like focus because you're just interested. So I think it comes from curiosity. That would be my advice on on how to carry a conversation with someone that you're nervous to have a conversation with. I know I've said stuff similar, but just listen, like truly just listen to every single thing that they're saying. Am I bisexual? I think I'm straight. I think everyone like for them, I think not everyone, but I think a lot of people are kind of like bi curious and like bi sexual a little bit, like can kind of like have a curiosity and like can be attracted to girls. I was definitely attracted to girls when I was like younger. Like I had like kind of like really early on like lesbian experiences with girls and I remember being like I like girls like thinking that I liked girls when I was young like fully thought I was gay like not like gay but I was like I'm fully bisexual and then I kind of got older and I definitely like prefer guys like I will probably marry a guy and yeah like I don't think I don't know I'm like I would define myself as straight I I would I wouldn't say I'm fully bisexual I feel like that title deserves belongs to people who are more deserving of it all like my sexual fantasies are with guys so I feel like that means I'm straight that's how I gauge it I'm like I'm definitely I'm definitely straight I think think I'd be attracted to the person there's some girls where I meet where I'm like literally I'd hook up with you in two seconds and I mean it um but I I do think I'm I'm still straight. I don't know if this makes any sense. Maybe I'm fucking bi. I don't know. I, I don't fucking know. I think I'm straight. Dude, I feel the same about being in a dissociative state of mind. Do you have any advice on getting out of it? Hope you're taking care of yourself. Heart. <laughs> I have kind of, I kind of briefly touched upon this. And I've kind of like been going back and forth on how much I want to share on my struggles, you could say, with dissociation. That is kind of my mental health problem is uh dissociation I didn't know what that was until last year when I found out that I maladaptive daydreamed and I also had uh mild kind of dissociative symptoms I said in my maladaptive daydreaming podcast if people watch the whole thing it's kind of long that I was kind of very into psychedelics at one point and when I was in London I took I was with my mom and me and my mom aren't that close and so I kind of un like I I had a bunch of mushrooms with me and I just didn't want to be there to be honest I nothing against my mom but all I was thinking about was counting the days to come home kind of thing and so I would just start going to the park every single day so she would be she was writing a book so she was writing her book and on her and on the couch and then I would just go to the park and we would just kind of do our own things in the day and then come back at night and so during that time I just escaped essentially into psychedelics and I started taking psychedelics every single day and I kind of I was already dissociated I think since I was a kid And so doing this as well with like pre-existing dissociation was not good and kind of expedited my dissociation and I became very, very dissociated. And then I ended up kind of doing more things that made it even worse, like moving far away from everybody and just a bunch of things. So that's kind of my issue that I'm trying to fix with my mental health is and dissociation like why it's problematic for me specifically is that it mostly affects my memory so I have a terrible memory I think anyone who knows me knows that it is pretty I don't remember like any of my life it's called generalized amnesia and It means you don't remember like there's different types of amnesia where you can forget like kind of traumatic experiences or you can forget like parts of your life. So not an experience or an event, but just an overall 
period of time in your life. So that's generalized amnesia. And that's technically what I have. And anyone who's watching this who experiences dissociation knows that. That it really does affect your memory. And it certainly has with me. I used to remember when I told like anyone a story like if I told you a story I would remember exactly that I told Melanie this story about this and I would never forget it until recently in the last like two and a half years I started telling stories and I didn't I I stopped remembering when I would tell someone a story and that's not like a huge deal but for me that was I my sister was would do that and I always would be like you've told this to me and I, I never got how she could forget until it started happening to me and I and then I started realizing that I was becoming dissociated. I also I, I went to high school in the States. I was talking to one of the girls I went to high school with out here. And she was like, Do you remember when you came to Beverly? And like everyone found that like video. It was it wasn't like a crazy video. It was like a video that I um edited actually of like my Spain trip. I went to Spain with a bunch of my friends and I made like a video for everybody and like the like the grade video and I um it was like crazy like it was just like a crazy partying video and kids at my school found it. And I didn't even remember that this happened. And this was a huge and even when she was reminding me, I bells didn't go off. The only reason I'm telling it like this is because I know now that that happened and it kind of kind of maybe could seem familiar I don't know if I'm even tricking myself but she was like do you remember when that happened and I was like fuck like I not only didn't remember that a story that happened to me like it wasn't even like it happened to her like she this happened to me it was like a scandal at my school that people found this video and I I started to realize like it was kind of bad and so that's that's my kind of view of dissociation I'm on medication called naltrexone for dissociation it's the only medication that I'm on and it is working a little bit I have a really good psychiatrist now who is amazing and has specializes in highly sensitive people and dissociation so I could not be in like better hands and he's I've I've tried all different types of therapy aside from talk therapy I've done two different things with him and I've tried a bunch of different types of therapy to kind of break myself out of this dissociation um but yeah that's kind of where I'm at I think that there's been slight improvements my biggest thing that I've kind of talked about on TikTok and stuff like that is I when I look in the mirror or when I look at myself it doesn't feel like it's me it feels like it's somebody else so that's that has symptom has been there since I was a kid and that's how I know I've been associated since I was a kid so yeah that's my experience with dissociation I yeah (laughs) it doesn't get talked about too much online dissociation so I thought I would just talk about my issues with it if anyone can relate to it but yeah that's my my problem yeah I'm doing fine and things could be way worse I'm just now realizing the consequences of my actions and that how crazy the brain is and that yeah I actually did one therapy session where my psychiatrist kind of told me a bunch of things about myself about me as a child when I was a child I was I I did a bunch of weird shit and they could be classified in different ways and him telling me certain things about myself made me really like look at myself of like who I am and like who I I am biologically and that night when I came home I looked in the mirror for the very first time I actually have this moment caught on photo booth because I was doing a, a video diary that I could start to see glimmers of myself in the mirror and like I saw myself and it's so crazy it kind of went away to be honest but it it gave me this really strong glimmer of hope that I'm going to fully get out of this because I had never once looked at myself and like really saw me I just it's this kind of like glass wall between me and what's really there anyone with dissociation knows that it's like a fuzzy kind of thing or it doesn't really feel like you it just I don't know it feels like just some girl I know like I recognize her but I don't know but it's not me 
I don't know. It's hard to explain. And it sounds kind of crazy. But it's not if you have dissociation. And there's so many, like, again, like, as I've said, like, worse things. This is just happens to be the way that I chose to protect myself and the way that I dealt with my situation was to dissociate completely and to not need anybody and just to be this kind of isolated entity that yeah so I'm trying to get better at that and trying to reconnect to myself and to who I am and I think that will help a lot of things in my life so yeah but I do think I'm going to get completely better. I think I, I, I honest to God, think that I will be completely undissociated one day. And I will, and I think sooner rather than later. I think the next two years, I, I don't want to be overly confident. But I, I'm just trying to be realistic. And I would love if two years is like, I would be so fucking happy with two years, truly. So, yeah, I do think I will get out of this dissociation soon. This is the conclusion of this podcast i'm sorry if this was all over the place this is the end of this podcast and i hope you guys liked it please send anything any recommendations that you guys have for me to talk about because i probably will so yeah anyways that's the end of this podcast and goodbye